Welcome. Welcome, one and all, to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. We are... We're almost two weeks into the Russian invasion of Ukraine, and the deeper you dig into what Russia is doing over there, the worse it gets. It's like a nesting doll of bad. So far, more than 1.5 million Ukrainian refugees have fled the country. It would be more, but Russia refuses to abide by their own announced ceasefires and safe corridors to allow civilians to escape. Repeatedly over the weekend, Russian troops continued to pummel cities with rockets even after the announcement of corridors. It's like Putin's competing in the evil Olympics against himself. And because he's Russian, you know he's juicing. <laughs> now, Putin... Putin says he's offering humanitarian corridors for real this time, but only for Ukrainians to flee to Russia. Well, that's not helpful. <laughs> that's like having a safety sign that says, in case of fire, jump into a pit of snakes. <laughs> it turns out that Ukrainian resistance has been much fiercer than Putin ever dreamed. So instead of trying to achieve... <laughs> Absolutely. So instead of trying to achieve a military victory, the Russians are attacking civilian infrastructure in an attempt to make Ukrainians survive with all electricity, water, food, medical help, and means of subsistence in what many are calling an effort to break Ukrainian morale. Break the morale? Hasn't Putin seen how tough these Ukrainians are? This weekend, a man and a woman who are serving together in the resistance took a break from fighting to get married on the front lines. It's, it's like a wedding in Texas, but with slightly fewer guns. <laughs> although, although I must say, I must say, huge faux pas. Everyone knows you're not supposed to wear the same color camo as the bride. <laughs> where is she? Where, where is she? I'll tell you what, I will never complain about a destination wedding again. <laughs> Russia has been hit with a series of crippling sanctions, and it looks like there's more to come, because the U.S. and its European allies are now discussing banning imports of Russian oil. Take that, Putin. We're not gonna buy our gas from a war criminal. We're gonna buy it from the good guys. Saudi Arabia. <laughs> but it's gonna cost. Since the invasion, oil prices have skyrocketed. Today, the average gas price in America hit an all-time record high of over $4 per gallon. Okay, that stings, but a clean conscience is worth a buck or two. I'm willing to pay... <laughs> it's important. Right. It's important. I'm willing to pay $4 a gallon. Hell, I'll pay $15 a gallon, because I drive a Tesla. <laughs> Right now, people all over the world are trying to find uh, inventive ways to help ordinary Ukrainians. For instance, Etsy buyers are urging people to help Ukrainians by buying digital items such as fonts, patterns, downloadable photographs, and artwork. So now you can order a lovely motivational needlepoint pattern that reads, live, laugh, Russian warship, go <laughs> yourself. <laughs> if your... Gets you. Gets you right there. Get you right there. If you're looking for more conventional ways to donate to the people in Ukraine, head over to at Colbert Late Show on Twitter. We've pinned a list of organizations who are helping refugees on the ground. Now, despite... <laughs> despite increasing global pressure, Putin isn't backing down. This weekend, he lashed out, declaring the sanction imposed by Western nations are akin to a declaration of war. Putin gave these comments while speaking to a group of Aeroflot flight attendants who, by the looks of it, were thrilled to <laughs> be there. <laughs> Never a good sign when the flight attendants give you the same face they give the guy clipping his toenails in Economy Plus. <laughs> of course, Russian flight attendants know all about no-fly zones. Thanks to sanctions against Russian airlines, Aeroflot now only flies to one foreign airport, Minsk, the capital of Belarus. So Russian travel agents had to cut back to a single poster, visit Belarus, sky is color of delicious cigarettes. <laughs> it seems like... So Belarusians here tonight. Seems like the only way this humanitarian crisis can end is if Putin is removed from office. 
When is he up? 24? He's up for re-election in 2024, but he still hasn't decided how much he's going to win by. <laughs> and he's doing everything possible to make sure the Russian people don't turn on him. For instance, one reporter in Russia says police in Moscow appear to be stopping civilians and demanding to see their phones in order to screen their photos and text messages. It says here in text message, it says, you up. <laughs> is short for Ukraine uprising. Seize him! <laughs> the reporter... It was a flip phone, in case you're wondering. It's a flip phone. <laughs> the reporter... <laughs> Thank you, John. That was great. Thank you. The reporter saw police officers demanding phones from people near Detsky Mir, a popular Russian toy store. I feel so bad for those Russian people. They just wanted to go and buy Russia's hottest toy, Mr. Actual Potato. <laughs> is... Is Potato. <laughs> this crackdown comes in the wake of a new law that would punish anyone who shares false information about the war in Ukraine with up to 15 years in prison. Of course, in this case, false is defined as anything other than what Putin wants you to say. For instance, it is now a crime to simply call the war a war. Instead, they want you to use the Kremlin's term, special military operation. And if you don't want to call it that, the Kremlin has a few other approved options. Special bang-bang time, <laughs> awkward family reunion, <laughs> National Lampoon's Eastern European Vacation, <laughs> and Benefer. <laughs> Evidently... Sure, why not? Evidently, the special military operation against information is working better than the real one. Some Ukrainians find that their relatives back in Russia refuse to believe it's an actual war. The Russian people are so used to accepting the Kremlin's lies that their most popular margarine is, you must believe it is butter. I got a great show for you tonight from Ukraine via satellite. Anderson Cooper will be here, plus Broadway star of the music man, Sutton Foster. Stick around.